Awesome, thanks. Well, first of all, first of all, welcome to Chile. Hola, Javi. Uh, I'm going to start with Christopher. Well, Christopher, you're one of the most veteran wrestlers uh, currently on the wrestling world. You're 49 years old. How you can stay in, in top shape when you compare other wrestlers? For example, Undertaker is 51 and he's currently standing with serious knee issues, but you're in top shape, like a top lap. Uh, well, first of all, I've been very lucky. Um, I've avoided a lot of major injury in my career. Um, I feel like I've wrestled a very smart style. Um, I'm not what I, I'm not what you would consider a daredevil or a, a, a risk taker. So that's sort of helped keep me in good shape uh, now that I'm 49 years old. Um, and part of it too is the ability to, to go out and wrestle younger guys. That to me makes me feel young. And so I, uh, I, I look for the best talent in the world. I want to wrestle them. I want to prove myself to them. And so um, that also helps me uh, stay motivated to be in good shape. Thanks. <laughs> Sí. Hola, hola, hello Christopher, hola Harry, ¿cómo estás? Mi pregunta es para Harry. Primero, eh, saber cómo estás y, la, y saber qué sensación tienes previo a quizás la pelea más importante en tu carrera, defendiendo el cinturón de Legión Lucha Libre. Eh, estoy tranquilo, estoy tranquilo, estoy relajado, ansioso sí, ansioso, quiero demostrar para qué estoy entrenando hace tanto tiempo. Eh, y nada, motivado, motivado al mil por ciento. Hola well, Christopher, Harry, ¿cómo are you? Uh, what the fans today can expect about your belt for the belt, the big belt of Legion Chalibre. And this maybe this is your first time facing a Latin American wrestler wrestler here in Latin America. Your feelings and also your feelings, Harry. First, okay. Um, first of all, uh, thank you to Legion Chalibre, thank you to Santiago Chile, thank you to the fans for inviting me down here. Um, it means a lot to me that uh, the wrestling world is growing and being strong everywhere, and this is the first time that I've ever been in Chile, but I've heard great things about Legion Lucha Libre from my friends Jay Lethal, from Zack Sabre Jr. They tell me great things about this company. They tell me great things about Harry. They tell me great things about this championship. Um, I feel like we both have something to prove tonight. If I win tonight, I get the chance to become the Legion Lucha Libre champion. But if Harry wins, Harry has raised the stock of this championship by defending it against top talent. And I don't think I'm being arrogant to say that I'm a top talent. I'm one of the best in the world. But I also know that I'm in for a fight because I know Harry is top, top notch. He's, he's number one in Santiago, Chile. He's number one in Legion Lucha Libre. And that means something to me. And it means something to him. So tonight the fans are going to see two men that are very proud, that are very focused on being a champion and being the best that they can be. And when you have two men like that in a wrestling ring, all you can hope for, like the fans, will get a treat. It's very good to see wrestlers like us uh, wrestle for the very first time. It's, it's, it's like a present to them, to these fans. Harry? Harry, en algún momento, 
llegó la hora, Cristóbal Daniels, lo hablamos ya hace unos meses, estás muy obligado, quizá una de las más importantes, es la más importante, es la más importante de tu carrera, ¿cómo te sientes hoy, ahora, y ya en este momento con Cristóbal Daniels al lado, listo para pelear? Claro, de partida, me eh, gané el, el, la oportunidad de esta lucha, o sea, fue un camino largo, donde estuve peleando contra incluso la dirigencia y, y hoy por lo tanto, tengo que demostrar para qué estoy luchando. O sea, lo, como él dijo, pues, somos eh, luchadores, el mejor luchador del mundo. ¿sí? Entonces hoy yo me posiciono como el luchador de la de dirigencia y tengo que demostrar que, que por algo estoy yo en esta lucha y, y tengo la presión también de no perder el tiempo porque todos los extranjeros que han venido no, ninguno ha podido ganar y yo no quiero hacer la excepción. I'm good, I trust him. <laughs> yeah, Christopher, uh, hard to leave it. Yeah, a few days ago you were with your pals and see you in China. We all know that all of the wrestling is working with uh, Oriental Wrestling Entertainment. But we also didn't know too much about Chinese wrestling. Can you tell us your experience in China and what brings Chinese wrestling to the table, to the big table of professional wrestling right now? Um, the Chinese wrestlers in OWE, they have taken what we know as professional wrestling and they've added their own Chinese Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu, and they've tried to make a very uh, unique hybrid of professional wrestling that way. I think that's one of the reasons that AEW sought them out. Um, I know for a fact Matt and Nick Jackson both were very impressed with the OWE athletes, and that's one of the reasons why AEW and OWE are in, are in business together. So yeah, it's it's that it's that hybrid form of Shaolin Kung Fu and professional wrestling mixed together that OWE is bringing to the table. And what kind of uh, what the Chinese wrestler brings? To only the rest, what we are going to see from the Just a completely different style of fighting. I mean, like I said, you're going to see stuff that you would see in, like, in a Jackie Chan film or, or uh, in a Kung Fu movie. I mean, that's the sort of stuff that you're going to see from these guys. And um, they're very focused, they're very driven athletes, and uh, they're all very young, but they're all very hungry to become better. And AEW is going to give them the opportunity to be seen on a global scale. Uh, the next question is for Christopher. Uh, me puedes ayudar aquí? Primero, uh, ¿qué te convenció a dar el paso adelante para firmar con All Elite Wrestling? Y si esta idea que te están planteando All Elite te recordó en cierta manera uh, lo que trató de hacer Impact Wrestling en sus inicios. Um, well, the reason that I became part of All Elite Wrestling, uh, I'm very close friends with Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. Um, when they had this vision of starting a new company, um, they offered myself and the rest of SCU an opportunity to be uh, a part of it, and we all jumped at the chance. And um, right now I feel like there's not a lot of difference between AEW now and TNA at the beginning because there was a lot of hope and a lot of younger guys that had, had an opportunity to be seen on a national scale. So that's very similar. But the one thing that I think we have going for us is um, we've already set up a very strong television deal with uh, TNT, we just announced that. Um, and that's going to give us an opportunity to be seen right out of the gate, the very first uh, television show. Um, you know, that's going to be seen by millions worldwide. And so that gives us the opportunity uh, to make an impact almost immediately. Um, so like Double or Nothing is next weekend, um, so that's going to be available on pay-per-view, but it'll be soon that um, you know, you'll be able to watch us on TNT, and that means everybody in the world will have an opportunity to see us and uh, get an opportunity to know what AEW is about. Harry, tú hace unos días hablaste con nosotros para Racing Pod, tú dijiste que esta era la más importante de tu carrera. Ahora, haciendo un análisis de la lucha libre en general, 
que te enfrentes a Christopher Daniels por el campeonato de legión muestra, es un indicio del gran auge que ha tenido la lucha libre chilena no solo en cuanto a espectáculos sino también a la calidad de los luchadores Hace tiempo que se está hablando de Chile a nivel internacional o sea, los países vecinos eh, conocen Chile, quieren venir a entrenar acá y eso habla muy bien de todos los luchadores que están subiendo el nivel eh, son muchos los que han salido al extranjero son muchos los que han entrenado con gente que realmente sabe. Entonces, claro, de a poco se ha ido eh, profesionalizando la lucha libre chilena. Entonces ahora estamos dando un gran paso al traer a luchadores realmente de renombre. Entonces, claro, sí, obviamente estamos encaminados a, al siguiente nivel. Gracias. Luis, has said that the biggest value of the of AEW roster is that is the new blood. Not the same guys, new blood, uh, roster that people, common people have never seen before. In, in that, with that mentality, uh, have you ever thought putting your eyes in the Latin American talent? We last year had the WWE tryout for Latin America, where a lot of Chilean wrestlers, Brazilian, Peruvian, Uh, do you have uh, any mind of watching uh, the Latin American talent for in the future? I don't know, being all elite wrestling. Yeah, of course. I think I think as all elite wrestling grows, we're going to look for international talent everywhere. And um, now that we know that uh, you know South American wrestling is strong and there's good companies, there are people to look for. So I mean, yeah, we'll be looking everywhere. And. Um, You know, it's just a matter of getting that opportunity to see who's who's at that level and who's ready to be seen on a worldwide scale. A question for Christopher. Uh, you, all, you are the same with other elite wrestling, but also your part in the in a role winning the uh, managerial side of the promotion. Uh, as a wrestler and someone who is, you know, with an important job behind the scenes. The rise of all elite has been the key for many wrestlers, especially in the real way, to seriously see to jump cheap. Uh, do you think that there is a motive because of this revolution that all elite has brought, or there is a deep, deeper motive for them to consider for for, for you guys? Um, well, I think I think that the the people in WWE that are considering jumping, they just are looking for. A different option. I mean, for a very long time, um, WWE was really the only place to have a full-time career. Uh, you know, and uh, you know there are other places like like Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor, but um, at a certain level, like WWE was it. And now I think that they think that AEW might offer them uh, a different opportunity. And um, you know, I can't really comment on any of their their motives. Um, but I mean, to me, it seems like they see an opportunity to go somewhere else and maybe be uh, looked at in a different light than they are in WWE. So I can't really say if that would be true for any of them or not. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty attractive with the TV deal with Turner. And also because this is, when you look back, this is like the first big promotion since Ted Turner, but WCW, that there's a millionaire uh, pushing real hard this project. Uh, And also, it's someone who knows the business, uh, it's a can son. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, people see the opportunity, and um, there's there's questions in, in, in what's going to happen with, with all elite wrestling. But I think the ones that are debating whether they want to go to AGW, they think that there's an opportunity to make their lives better by being there. and. Um, You know, it'll just, it's just we have to wait and see how everything goes for the people that are already there, whether or not we're going to open doors for other people or not. So, I mean, we'll see. Thanks. Eh, the next question is for Christopher. Eh, primero, con la ayuda de aquí el doctor, eh, ¿cuál ha sido el factor de importancia de Frankie Kazarian durante tu carrera? Y si en algún momento de tu extenso de, de tu extensa carrera te ha se te ha venido a la mente la oportunidad de dejar el, el mundo de la lucha libre. Okay. 
and, and there are like two questions. And the other is, have you ever thought about the chance of painting, uh, fighting? Um, well, first of all, Frankie, Frankie and I have been friends for more than 20 years, and um, uh, we've been traveling together since TNA actually started. So um, we didn't start tagging full time until 2012, but we had always been friends, and we were very like-minded. And so um, once we started traveling together full time, and, and bad influence became a thing, and then the addiction became a thing. Um, it was easy to sort of rely on him as my friend and I, he relied on me as a friend to sort of support each other as we went around and, and uh, you know, we went from TNA to Ring of Honor, we became champions there and now we're all in, in All Elite Wrestling along with Scorpio. So, um, you know, the three of us sort of rely on each other to keep our spirits high and to keep our motivation strong so that we continue to excel and be the best three wrestlers that we can be. Um, and as far as quitting, um, you know, I've been wrestling for 26 years, and there's going to come a time where I won't be able to wrestle at a, at a top level, and I don't want to stay past my time. So I think about quitting all the time, but at this point, I feel still good about how I'm wrestling and the performances that I can do. Um, as long as I can continue to stay fit and stay healthy, I want to keep doing it because this is still what I love to do. Final question for me. If Harry beats you tonight, do you consider to maybe make a rematch in all the wrestling? If you if this guy impress you in the ring? We'll see man. I mean yeah, I mean it's not my decision, it's not my company, but I'd be happy to uh, put a word in for, for Harry if he gets his hand raised tonight. Um, I think there's a lot of people that at this point are looking to wrestle guys in, in AEW to try and make an impression upon the management, to make an impression upon the, com the company. And um, it's an opportunity for Harry tonight. It's not just me wrestling for his belt, it's him wrestling for his career. And I mean, great things can happen for him if, if, if things go his way tonight. So um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens in that ring. I have a final question, and this is like a basic question. It's about your Falling Angel. Yes. Because we have some villains or